out this week. But we knew going in that there may not be a lot of movement. And then all of a sudden, Friday night, Utah hammered USC. So, uh, Saturday, Kansas State beats TCU. And so, in the end, Georgia, Michigan remain number one. TCU remains number three. Ohio State moves into four. Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, we have amazing news, of course, in the college football coaching carousel, the transfer portal. But let's start with the semifinals. Did they get it right? Yeah, they got it right. I, I think that we were all, and I, I've thought about this the last couple of days, we were all so traumatized by years of the committee kind of bending things to fit some sort of narrative that, you know, we're just waiting for the explanation on it. Alabama out of total fear, but none of it made any sense. I mean, every single thing that they could have said about Alabama, TCU had had improved upon, and losing in the title game by three points in overtime, uh, not really that bad of a thing when you compare it to who is going to be in if they are out, and the committee is going to have to start thinking about things in, in more of a, you know, realistic sense with 12 teams or six teams that they're going to have to put in um, – you know, in the in instead of four after the conference champions go in, and uh, I, I mean they got it right. It's good. I think it's going to be good games. Um, bum for USC though. You know, would have liked to you know see at least a, you know four of the five Power Five conferences represented. But you know, it's everybody else's fault for not not playing well enough. I guess. Uh, yeah, I think they got it right. I, I don't think that in the end it was that hard of a decision, quite frankly. I think that uh, Twitter made it sound like a hard decision because a lot of people with rolled tide in their bios, uh, thought that they had a logical argument, but I don't think there was really much of an argument. Uh, all four teams in the playoff either had zero or one losses. The teams that are complaining about being left on the outside have two or more, right? Uh, or have two in, in Alabama's case. So I think to simply put, um, it wasn't that hard of a decision in the long run. I think, uh, as Paul said, people's fear of Alabama or, or what have you, of just what's happened in the past, Ohio State leaping Baylor and TCU back in 2014. Uh, there's definitely, you know, reasons when it's such a small pool to worry if you're one of the, you know, lesser brands or mostly if you have a brand the size of an Alabama nipping at your heels. I, I can understand the reason for a little bit of uneasiness, but even through all of that talk over the last few days, I never, after Saturday, really blinked twice about what this field was going to look like. I mean, I didn't think that Alabama was getting number four. I thought it would be Ohio State. My question was just a matter of, are they going to try to pull the Ohio State-Michigan rematch in the semifinals? No way. And I'm glad that they that. didn't do that no. because that would have been so forced and it would have been such a money and eyeball grab. They would have ruined it potentially happen more naturally in the future. Well, if it happens now, it's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah. If they would have made it happen in the semis just to make it happen, I don't think it would have been that great. It would have pulled a big number, but I don't think it would have been natural and, and as much you know fun as it will be if, in fact, it does happen naturally. I don't think there was any chance, no matter the results no. of anybody and anyone else other than Michigan, that Ohio State and Michigan were going to play in the semifinals, no matter what Boo Corrigan or anyone was to say about it, they were not going to have that as a semifinal well, game. Fun, even if it, even if that would have made sense. Fundamentally, it goes back to how it wasn't. It's not fair to Michigan, just like it wasn't fair to like well, the reason we got all this is because it wasn't fair to LSU that they got to beat Alabama, go to the conference title game, and then play Alabama again. Alabama didn't suffer at all for that loss. They got to go and play LSU again just like Michigan thumps Ohio State in the fourth quarter of that game and wins convincingly and instead of getting just one of the person after you then go and win the conference title game playing an extra game get to turn around and play them again yeah not just wouldn't have been it would have negated that accomplishment those two accomplishments right then now if Ohio State you know beats Georgia and then Michigan beats TCU then heck yeah like Craig said let's do it yeah, I, mean, I think that'll be incredible if it happens that way. Um, you know, I think that that would be a buildup like we've never seen before. See Ohio State, Michigan, a rematch for the national title. But yeah, in the semifinals, you just couldn't do that. That would have been a poor decision. And so I think that, yeah, they got it right. I think Georgia's clearly the number one team in the country. Um, I think that TCU's more than deserving after losing it over time. Uh, not without some controversy. Congrats to K-State. Congrats to K-State. You earned that win. But, you know, that was a close enough game where you go like, ah, man, like, you know, if they played a third time, who are you picking? 
Um, so I think TCU deserved it. Do you know who you would pick if they played a third time? No, I mean, I don't either. I I don't know. I maybe TCU, maybe Kansas state. I really have no idea. I'd have to sit there and kind of stew on it a little bit, but I mean, it's not like one's clearly better than the other at this point through two matches. I mean, it's pretty even just like the record is. So uh, I think that's huge for the big 12 to have one of their, uh, teams that's going to be around post OU and Texas exit, uh, to make the playoff, uh, you know, depending on, you know, what they do, obviously they could grow even bigger and more, uh, impactful, uh, although that will be really hard against a, a strong Michigan team, but just the simple fact that it's a non Oklahoma team making the playoff for the big 12, I think is, is massive for the conference, especially leading into this new era where, you know, last year people were talking about who's going to lead the new big 12. Like, okay, well, Baylor was a logical choice. They had a down year this year. Um, but TCU comes, you know, surging in and, and takes it even farther uh, to to actually book a playoff spot. I actually think going back to the Alabama thing, uh, that the more logical, uh, the, the more realistic conversation was whether or not Tennessee should be five or Alabama should be five versus whether Alabama was getting the top mm-hmm. four. I think that's a more realistic conversation. There's a lot of wasted hot air on Twitter, though. I get it because it's the SEC and because it's Bama and all of that and Saban's on TV politicking everywhere and and all that jazz, but they didn't deserve it, man. They didn't deserve it. I don't care what any fan says. I don't care what any pundit says. They did not deserve it uh, just because I think the argument this year was basically, well, they deserved it because they're named Alabama. It was basically the the argument that it it rolled back around to more often than not. No matter where the teams they lost to were when they were ranked at the time, this was not a great Alabama team. It just simply wasn't. Compared to the teams we've seen in recent years, it's not. It's wasted talent more so than it is a great Alabama team. Now, could they have gone in the playoff and beaten somebody else? Sure, but they didn't deserve the opportunity versus there was not, the resume of the other four. There was not that win that, no. you know, it, it, the win in t- at Texas early when they were unranked actually vaulted UT into the top uh, 25. Against Hudson Card? And, yeah, and it, there wasn't, you know, Ole Miss is, is not the same not, uh, they lose two tough games, but the bottom line is, is there wasn't that one game with Alabama that you could point to as even part of the argument, even if, as Nick Saban and other fans have said, what if Vegas was to decide, well, if we do that, then why play the season? Well, If, if Vegas, we do that based on recruiting and top 25 preseason polls, then why do we even well, play the also, season? Well, also, if Vegas decided, then Alabama wouldn't have two losses. Yeah, it's true. No, they'd, they, yeah. would, they would be... Probably unbeaten up until this point. Well, and also, look. Does, but that is not how – it's like endowment it, in, in, in but, fan base and stuff like that when they talk about TV. It's just – there's always an excuse for some. And I like Nick Saban a ton. They didn't in this particular case this year. One really, really good win would probably have gotten them into the four, but they didn't have one. Coach Saban is great at, at a lot. Of stuff. He is not really great at politicking because he's never had to before. For example, um, you know, when the, he kicked off the Jimbo Fisher argument this summer with what he said, well, was anybody sitting back believing that Alabama didn't have the money to go toe to toe with anybody else when it came to college? Well, they're the best program in the country. You have the money, you got to be the best program in the country because you have the money. The same argument. It which was flawed then that he was making. Well, look, who would win? You know, who's the more talented team? Well, look, Nick, I don't know if you watched you guys play this year, but I don't know that that's true because a lot of stupid penalties, a lot of wasted talent, like Craig said. So if you want to get into the splitting hairs of who would win this game or who has the better players, but you might not want to make that with this roster. And we're talking too much about a team that's not in the four, but I understand why. Congratulations to Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State for being in the four. Now, there was this, I saw this a little bit. Ohio State actually moves up without playing. They had a bye week. Technically, they had a bye week. And any team that would have moved up to any of the top four, if they would have in a week in which they didn't play for the conference championship, and we have seen that before. I'm not saying it's the first time. But they had a bye week. And they, they, they were able to sit back and watch somebody else lose, in this case USC, in a game where Utah hammered them down in the, in the second half. So there's that. That's why if you expand the 12, no matter what the elitists say, uh, that, that, that to me, then you don't get in based on a buy. You can have a buy. You earn a buy if you're one of the top four, but you don't get in because somebody else in front of you lost. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting weekend for the you know playoff 
expansion or playoff anti-expansion folks to have some conversations. I mean, I think that uh, the BCS has a bigger, better argument than, than the four this year. Uh, and I think the expanded field, you know, with – Georgia being as much of a juggernaut as they are, and you know, we'll see to what level a Michigan is or a TCU is or an Ohio State is, but clearly Georgia is far and away probably the premier program in college football right now. Whether it's two teams in the BCS or it's four teams in the CFP or it's an expanded 12-team field, they're probably going to be heavily favored over every single team they play no matter what. And I understand that you can kind of just default – uh, put them into the next round in any setup or any mock-up, whether it's 2, 4, 12, or whatever. But that's just not going to change no matter what the field is. As far as the rest of the field go goes, you know, I think this would have been the perfect year to have the BCS because there's two 13-0 teams right on top of the rankings, and you just go Georgia, Michigan, and boom, it's done. But it's not always like that every year. And I do think when you look around, like, yeah, TCU could maybe give somebody some trouble. Ohio State could maybe give somebody some trouble. Um, you know, I think it works okay with four this year, although this, to me, would have been a year where it's either best to have just the two BCS teams or to have the full-blown expanded field. It, you know, I, I think the four, this is like the bad year to have a four, in my opinion, because there's just enough fringe to argue three, four, five, six, seven, whoever. Even, how about a Utah at number eight? Who wants to play Utah in the first round? You want to play Utah? You want to play? I don't want to play Utah right yeah. now. But well, that's, that's why a, the 12 would be great. Well, that's what I'm, yeah. My whole point is yeah. what, I'm, what I'm saying is that if you were to have, you know, your options this year, I think the four-team playoff would probably be option three of the three options because there's either enough for teams that aren't in that top four, like a Utah, for example, uh, like a K-State, like a Tennessee, even though Hendon Hooker's hurt now, but, you know, uh, Clemson – not as much, but Cade Club, you know, maybe that's a fun team to watch with him now securely at the helm. Um, but, you know, obviously the BCS would have worked really well. Nobody could have argued Georgia, Michigan. Um, but, yeah, the four team is, is going to always leave a lot of debate, especially in a year like this where there's maybe one clear-cut really super elite team, maybe a couple of them, and then there's probably like 10 second or 1B elite you know, level teams, mm -hmm. uh, and you can sort that out. But uh, I think it'll be fun. I think, you know, certainly there's more debate to be had, but uh, I think the committee got it right in the end and uh, d went the right way with this. And I'm not saying that just because a Big 12 team got in. TCU deserved to get in, period. All right, I'm going to name.